Welcome into the Pursuit of Manliness podcast, where we are vigorously equipping men to pursue biblical manliness. My name is Jarrett Samuels. I'm the host of the podcast. Men, as always, I'd like to thank you for checking out today's podcast episode. Now, whether this is your first time checking out the Pursuit of Manliness or you've been here for a while, I want to encourage you, as always, make sure you visit the website, thepursuitofmanliness.com. There you'll find this podcast episode, a whole catalog of 400 plus podcast episodes. You can see what's available in the gear store. You can sign up for the email newsletter. You can learn about the herd and more. I want to highlight our men's retreat. Our men's retreat registration is open until Sunday, September 9th. So make sure you secure your spot. You sign yourself up, sign your son up, some guys in the church. Hey man, that's your call. We would love to see you here in Indianapolis on September 27th, 28th in the fall. And then as always, I want to remind you that the Wednesday podcast is sponsored by Loader Road Goods. Loader Road Goods out of Coshocton, Ohio. Chris Kent, owner, operator, chief leather man at Loader Road Goods. Listen, visit their website. You're going to see a ton of products available. I do want to say this. We're into August. As far as I'm concerned, it's fall. I know it's not fall for everybody, but that's where I'm at. That's where my mind is gone. So once we hit August, we're into fall. What's fall mean? It means more fires, more hanging out. Man, you make a fire. What's the best thing to do? Make some food. Get out those cast iron skillets. The other day I received this uh, handle cover that goes perfectly over my cast iron skillet. You sit around a fire, you make food in a cast iron skillet. Everyone's happy. It's a win. Hey, use the link and the discount code in today's show notes. Save money on your next order. Man, it's time for today's podcast episode. I want to bring you on in on a bit of a secret. It's not really a secret, but I have to come clean on something. Uh, I can hug, okay? I know that's a strange way to start a podcast, but I am more than capable of hugging. The reason why I make such a big deal about it is twofold. The first is um, I'm awkward. I am an awkward individual. Um, I, I, you know, my inclination is, hey, just leave me alone. So if I have to hug, then it's a little, little strange. But there are times when it is necessary. If I haven't seen you in a long time, if uh, someone passed away, yeah, I'm gonna hug. If I saw you yesterday, probably not necessary. But the second reason, and this is where uh, the anti-hugging campaign was birthed out of, was um, just some things I saw in my younger years, and I would say early years of ministry, just observing people, witnessing things. I'll give you one example. I was standing in this area at a church where I was serving. Uh, they have um, like donuts and coffee and stuff. And there was a younger lady, uh, they had all these round tables. There was a younger lady talking to this older guy, and I just happened to be in the vicinity. And I don't know what they were talking about, but he had like his hand maybe on her wrist or hand, like holding her hand or something. And I remember her like starting to walk away and he grabbed her and kind of even pulled her in. And I remember in that instance thinking, you're a dirty old man. Like you could tell she's trying to get away, whether it's out of, you know, I have somewhere else to be or you're making me uncomfortable or I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't know. But as an older guy, I thought, why don't you just let her go? She's not related to you. She goes to this church. Let her go. You're a dirty old man. And I don't think it's just old men. Uh, I remember an instance, my wife has brought it up a number of times through the years, and obviously it stood out to her, where uh, we were actually leaving a ministry. And it was kind of like a lunch with some friends. We're getting ready to take off for the last time to see these people. And there was a particular individual. She's like, man, when this person hugged me, it was really uncomfortable. Now, this is an individual that we had spent a lot of time with, um, us, their kids, our kids, whatever, whatever the combination. But in that instance, she said, and it was really uncomfortable. And I would never want to be in a situation as a guy where I put someone else, uh, their wife, in, in a place where they felt uncomfortable with my intent. That was one of the things I've joked about through the years. You'll never have to wonder if you come around the corner, if I'm hugging on your wife, right? Like, cause that's, that's not going to happen. So I, I say that to get to this, I want to share this verse. I remember about 20 years ago, uh, reading a book, every man's battle, and it was on sexual temptation, lust, et cetera. Many of you are familiar with this. I think they've, whoever the author was, I think they've written other forms of this book, but it was a verse that I read and I thought, I don't recall ever hearing that verse before. Incredibly convicting and looking at it, staring at it, thinking, why have I never considered that verse before? Job 
Chapter 31, verse 1, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Uh, how then could I gaze at a virgin? Or some translations would say, I have made a covenant that I will never look lustfully or longingly towards a young lady, towards a virgin. Virgin, forgive me. Job is saying, um, I made a deal with my conscience, with my eyes, that I'm never going to look at a girl or a woman, if you will, in an inappropriate manner. I'm, ne I'm never going to do that. He made a covenant. Now, whether he did or not, I don't know. That's a long time ago. As you've read the book of Job, he's got a lot of other fish to fry at the same time. But when I read that verse, I thought, I don't recall ever hearing that. I don't recall ever stumbling upon that verse in a youth group, in a Bible study, in, you know, in any setting. I don't remember ever hearing that verse. Man, I want to talk about this idea of repent, resolve, remove. And I want to talk to somebody right now, and uh, I don't know who you are, but it needs to be said. There's somebody listening to this right now, there's somebody watching this right now, and you either are or you are on the cusp of being a dirty old man. You are. And nobody around you has the moral courage, the relational equity to say, hey guy, the way you look at those ladies, the way you talk about those ladies, the way you make them uncomfortable, the things you discuss in their presence or out of their presence, or the way that you kind of scan the room, you are a dirty old man. Like I, nobody, I don't know too many people who find great comfort in having that conversation with other people, but it needs to be said. It needs to be said. I, m many men will say, well, I struggle with lust or I struggle with sexual temptation. And some guys around them will go, yeah, yeah, me too, me too, me too. And, and here's the reality. If that is something you struggle with, I don't know if you'll ever be completely over that. I, I don't know if an alcoholic ever says, I never think of another drink again. I don't know how that works. I don't understand. But if you struggle with sexual temptation, I got bad news for you. People are everywhere. But what you choose to do with your eyes, what you choose to do with your conversations, what you allow your mind to fixate on, now that's on you. People aren't going away, but that's on you, how you respond to that. So that's, that's what we're looking at today. I'm going to repent, resolve, remove. Because somebody listening, and I don't know who you are, but you're becoming that guy. And if we don't resolve that in the younger years, we don't resolve that when uh, we're cognizant of it, I think it just becomes who we are. And then you become comfortable being that pervy old guy who doesn't have a problem having conversations or looking or doing these things. And I don't think it's getting any better. Maybe it's always been that way and I was naive to it. But I've, I've noticed more and more instances as I get older where... I'm seeing guys discuss things, talk about things, share things, and I'm like, you shouldn't be talking that way. You shouldn't be saying that out loud. Now, let, let me say this. We are humans. You're going to notice when somebody walks into a room that you would say that that young lady is pretty or put together or however, whatever verbiage you use, I, you know, I don't know. That, that's natural. The same way if a guy walks into a place in a suit, you're like, man, best dressed award. Or if somebody walks in and they're really tall, somebody walks in and you can tell they've been working out. Somebody walks in and they look homeless. Like we notice things about people. That, that is inevitable. So you're going to notice people. But I think it's when you take it to that sinful place, that's where it's wrong. You know, Jesus said that it was a sin to look at a woman lustfully. He didn't say it was a sin to notice there's a woman sitting to your left or right or walking by or at the cashier table or wherever. Like, that's going to happen. Like, we, we, we can't just, you know, cover our eyes and walk through life just, you know, trying to figure out where to go because we're so afraid we might look up and notice somebody. You're going to notice people. But we have to take every thought captive. We have to grab a hold of our tongue. We have to grab a hold of our eyeballs and say, stop and do something different. We're going to repent we're going to resolve, remove. Somebody listening is going to do this. Somebody listening to this or watching this says, you know what? I feel like you're talking about me. And I, I understand that. Let me give you a couple examples that happened recently. And this is why I'm, I'm, this was not the topic for today, but this is where we're at. Recently, I was in a, a place called Brown County, Indiana. And it's, it's uh, 
one of the most hidden gems in the state of Indiana. Well, while I'm there, uh, I was walking to a store. I was walking to a store late later because I was with my wife and kids and my mother-in-law because um, I was talking to this other guy. He was a nut job, but talking to him. And as I walk in the store, I found my, uh, my kids and uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, was looking at something somewhere. And so I find her. Oh, there she is. Now I find someone I recognize in this store. And I recognize about four feet from her is an older gentleman. I'm going to say 60s. <clears throat> and I noticed that he's looking at her kind of up and down. And I thought, nope. So I walk over there. And as I walk over there, dirty old man starts to put it together. Hey, either this guy noticed me, correct, or he's with this girl, correct. And he goes away. He goes around an aisle. He goes somewhere else. Oop. And it was one of these weird little house store things that it's, you know, so I don't, I'm not really sure where he went. I did let my daughter know what was going on. She needs to have that awareness of what's going on. Now, she can't control dirty old man, okay? He's 40, 50, I don't know, years older than her. And I thought, you're a dirtball. But I'm going to go over there. I'm going to make sure you know I know. And uh, where he went, who knows? Probably went and found his wife. What a lucky lady. And uh, continued on his day shopping. Who knows? The next day, the next day, I'm in a place where uh, at, at our church, we have this area where we gather. It's called the gathering place. If you come to the retreat, you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like a coffee hangout area. And we're sitting there and we have a lady who comes and she takes pictures uh, for our church from time to time. She's been at the men's retreat and she does a lot of events for us and stuff. So she's there. She does this every once in a while on a Sunday just to get some pictures we can put on social media. Recently, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, she got married to a guy who's also been in the retreat, and he comes to church with her, and good people. And as I'm sitting there, minding my own business on a couch, there's a few guys away from me, and they start talking about her. And I thought, are you serious? Are, are you Now, I wouldn't say it was overtly sexual. However, if that was your daughter or wife, you might flip a table. You might say, uh, excuse me. Who do you think you're talking about here? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Like it's becoming too, too commonplace to be a dirty old guy. It's, it's, I think it's too natural. So you're a guy in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, and you struggle with pornography. You're on social media. You're watching shows you shouldn't watch. You watch the lady run by the house. You've been looking at the secretary in the office. You've been going, you go to the grocery store and you know this lady always works in this department. Or you go this place because this person works there. And you try to flirt with them or you try to, you know, impress them and make eyes at them and they think you're funny or whatever. And you get some kind of endorphin from this and it's, it's not, it's sinful. It's wicked, it's evil. Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That should be our pursuit. God, give me a pure heart. I'm going to notice pretty people, okay? I'm going to notice attractive people. But you see, when I look at my buddies around the table and I say, did you see her over there? Yeah, boy, I'll tell you what. Do you see what happens there? Not only am I verbalizing, hey, I can't keep it to myself. I can't stop my eyes. I can't stop my thoughts to the point that it has to leave my mouth. Not only am I doing that, but then I bring these other guys in on that. I was at my son's soccer game once, and a guy was noticing a lady walk by, and he said something about her. So I, I don't remember what he, I mean, he made a noise. So I looked to see what's he making a noise by. I said, hey, you can't look. You're married. I wasn't trying to look. I was trying to figure out why you're making a noise. But if you know I'm married, and let's say you're playing by those rules, which we should be, that as a married guy, you shouldn't be looking, then why did you bring me in on that? Because he doesn't, it's not, a, it's not a matter to him. He, he was a, a hunter and a gatherer in that moment. He was looking at a, a lady that he deemed attractive and uh, to the point that he had to make a noise. I bet that would woo her if she just heard the noise he made as she was walking her son to the soccer field. Man, I'm starting to think we are the problem. I've been saying for a long time, well, that's garbage. Ah, nah, nah. We are the problem in a lot of ways. Either the problem is, as I said in the beginning, nobody has the moral courage to tell you you're a dirty old man. You're a pervert. You're disrespecting your wife. You're sinful. You have no self-control. You can't contain yourself. 
You get your jollies on looking at somebody that you have no business looking at. Do you, do you think that impresses them? Do you think that that works for them? But I also think we have to address this somewhere. And I think the low-hanging fruit is a podcast because for some of you, as I said, you are that guy. And you're listening to me if you're still here and you're thinking, yep, that's me. That's me. He saw me. No, I didn't see you. I just know enough men. I've just been in enough situations. Whether <laughs> in ministry, work with all different types of guys, married, single, divorced, whatever, you know, athletics, wherever. I mean, I've been around a lot of people like you. And I say, we are the problem. Problem is, one, men can't control themselves. They can. They choose not to. And two, we're not sure where the courage comes in to say something and to say, brother, you shouldn't be talking like that. You shouldn't be looking at her. Now, he, if you do that, he will be deeply offended and embarrassed. Too bad. It's what needs to be said. Proverbs chapter 10. Let me turn to Proverbs real quick. Probably should have been here before I was just going on. I'm going to share a couple verses. Proverbs 10, 9. Verse 9 says, whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his way crooked will be found out. You're crooked. You're walking crooked. If you, you, that is the opposite of integrity. If you can't control your eyes, you can't control your words, you can't control the strange noises that come out of you. Proverbs 4, 25, 27, keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the spring of life. Put away your crooked speech. Hey, did you notice her? That's crooked speech. And you're... And, Oh, and devious talk from far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. You notice a pretty girl walks in? Read your Bible. Hey, man, you're good at staring at your shoes when it's prayer time. Stare at your shoes. Pull out your phone. You know, do something, but you don't have to take four looks. You don't have to notice what color shoes she's wearing and all of her mannerisms and everything about her. You don't have to look to see if she's married because you have other things to do because you're going to walk in integrity. Ponder the path of your feet. Then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. It comes down to want to. It just comes down to want to. As I said, if you're uh, attracted to women, and uh, if you're a guy, that's what you, that's that's your deal. That's the card you drew. Um, they're everywhere. They are going to be everywhere, and they should not have to worry if a dirty old man is gazing at them up and down. They shouldn't have to wonder, well, where's my, when's my husband going to show up? When's my dad going to show up? When's my boyfriend going to show up? Whoever that's going to protect me from this dirt ball. They shouldn't have to do that. Now, I know having this conversation, we're not going to solve all the pervy issues, but we can address one. And that starts with you and it starts with me to say, we're not going to be that guy. Again, I don't think you just magically become something when you hit a certain age and say, Phew, all that's gone. I think it gets worse. The way I understand it, and I'm, I'm 49, but the way I understand it now at 49, looking ahead and looking at the next, I don't know, two, maybe three decades, whatever I got, is I'm noticing I'm getting more and more settled in some things. Well, if you become settled in being a dirty old man, say 49, well, by the time you're 70, 80, it just becomes who you are. So we need to say, no, we're not going to do that. Titus chapter 2, verse 2. Older men are be sober-minded. I noticed her. So what? She's in the room. You didn't notice the guy drooling in a cup over there. Be sober-minded. Dignified. That's internal and external. Dignified. Self-controlled. You noticed her. Maybe someone at the other table did. Y'all don't need to talk about it. You don't need to talk about it. We're going to be self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Give these young kids something to aspire to. Man, be that guy that you don't have to worry if someone goes through your phone or someone catches you glancing them or whatever. You go into a restaurant with somebody and, or meet with a buddy or you're to say, hey, man, can we switch a different table? I don't, I'm not going to sit right next to these ladies. I'm not going to, you know, I, you know think about what, what should I be doing right now? What if my wife was sitting here and you say, well, she doesn't care. Then you have a much much more tragic problem on your hand if she doesn't care, I promise you. And even for some of you guys who believe she doesn't care, if you look at stuff online or look at that girl, I've heard guys say this. She does. She either has her own stuff or she has that little self-confidence that she's like, well, at least this guy's still with me. 
Either way, that's pathetic and sad. Aren't we supposed to be about more than that? So I want to break this down for you. Repent, resolve, remove. We're going to, I've been saying this a couple times. Repent. Repent of your sins. It is sinful. I don't care if you think it's funny. I don't care if you think it's a game. I don't care if you think it's just fraternity talk or whatever. It's not. It's not. You know that, that whole thing like that's not just somebody's daughter, that's somebody, whatever. Like I don't, I don't sign up for that garbage. But it is somebody. And that person shouldn't have to be wondering, and maybe they're not wondering, but it doesn't matter. They shouldn't be objectified by us. Like, let's live with integrity. So let's repent of our sins. God, I have been living this sin for 40 years of my life. God, I've been so accustomed to just saying I'm sorry, but not really being sorry. I get caught up in this. I delete that app, but I, I download it again, or I follow that hashtag, or I get involved in that. Like, really repent and say, God, I need to... I, this this has to be done. Let me get an accountability group. Let me get with some guys who will hold me to a higher standard. Let me get with some guys that they see my eyes wander and they have permission to call me out and say, brother, we don't do that. We don't live like that. And you say, well, I do. Well, okay. That's not what you do on a narrow road. You just don't do that. So I'm going to repent of my sins. Number two, I'm going to resolve to live above reproach. I had a post the other day about solemnity. We just don't take things serious no more. We like to be goofy. Like to be. I love to be funny. I think I'm hilarious. I love to do funny things. Or you know, you make fun of me. I make fun of you. We just rip on. It's fun. Like we just we like we take things like hard. We got to take some things serious. I don't think we understand the idea of resolve to live above reproach to say no. I'm not going to live like that anymore. Dirty old man will not be my story. And again, I don't think you accidentally just move away from it. I think it becomes habitual. What you do in private will always find its way in public. Maybe you go to the beach, you don't wear sunglasses no more. Maybe you stop wearing sunglasses altogether. Like, well, no one can see my eyes. No way. Yeah, that's a problem. Nobody knows my, my thoughts. And that's, yeah, God does. That's a problem. So I'm going to repent. I'm truly going to repent of my sins. And I'm going to resolve. I'm not going to live like that no more. And then I'm going to remove temptation. I'm going to remove temptation. I said just a moment ago, I like funny stuff. I like to laugh. I don't like things too serious. Unless it's like a documentary. I'll get in on that. But I like funny stuff. What I've found in the last, I don't know how many years, is all the quote unquote funny movies. I'm going to say the Will Ferrell type of movies, the Adam Sandler type of movies always have to go extremely sexual in nature. And it's the point where I'm like, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth doing it. You got that movie theater in your mind. I'm like, I don't need to replay the events of last night or whatever I watched over and over. Uh, I want to remove temptation. I'm going to delete the apps. Some of you guys are great at that. You delete the apps or you delete the account. And by the way, if you delete the account, it's not, it's not an airport. You don't have to announce that you're taking off. You just, you can do it and be done. You can do that. That's okay. I would encourage you somehow, some way, wherever it is, get in godly community, real authentic community that, that will hold you to a higher standard. But hey, man, if you need to get rid of the apps, if you need to have, like we talk about the RO thing, if you need to have a place where you put your phone, you put it in a drawer, you give it to your wife. Say, honey, here's my phone. I don't want to fall into temptation tonight. I bet she'll take care of that problem for you. She'll say, all right, let's put the phone in, the, in a box. Let's turn it off. Let's what, whatever. I mean, whatever you got to do, figure it out. This is one of the reasons why we do Zoom calls at night and try. We do them different during the day and different times. But at night, when are men most vulnerable to fall into sin? Most of the time at night when they have nothing else to do. They come home from the day. Now, again, we have lots of time zones, but you get the point. We're trying to redeem our time together. We're trying to find ways that we can leverage the goodness of God in a community of men. And then we log off and say, man, I don't want to get wrapped up in that stuff. I don't want to start scrolling. I don't want to get in those things because I just had a conversation about whatever it is. I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to resolve to live above reproach. Number three, remove temptation. Man, I don't know what temptation is for you. I don't know what that looks like. It might mean you quit your job and you go somewhere else. Maybe you've been flirting with the secretary and you've been justifying as we're just friends. Yeah. Uh, maybe you take a path to work that you know somebody jogs every morning. Well, maybe you take a different path. You know, maybe you ask to get your office moved somewhere else. I mean, I don't know what you got to do, but you have to decide, man, I'm, that's not going to be my story. Dirty old man can't be my story. Pervy Pete in the corner can't be it. And here's what I'm starting to learn as my, my daughters get older, my wife shares more, um, Women know. Most women know. And I think that's the discernment given to them by the Lord to say, stay away from that guy. 
Don't be in that situation with that guy. That's dangerous. Hey, there's a whole book about it. It's called Proverbs. You know, there's the wise guy and there's a the foolish guy. You figure out what you want to be. Repent, resolve, remove. Amen. Men, I appreciate you guys who listen. I appreciate you guys who watch the show. Subscribe. You download. You share it. Whatever. Thankful for these conversations. As I said in the beginning, visit the website. Hey, we're looking at uh, about a month left in registration for our men's retreat. It has been the last three years the most powerful weekend on the calendar. It's nothing we do. It's everything the Lord does. And the guys that come together, well, I'll tell you what, it's good for your soul. So if you need that, we got one. We'd love to have you be a part of it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Let's keep pursuing biblical manliness.